Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates Interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Joy Cardine, and I'd like to introduce Grant Foster, running for Alderperson from District 15. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement as to your educational, vocational, and civic experience that you have which qualifies you for this office and why you are running for Alder. Great. Well, thanks, Joy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I grew up in small town Wisconsin. Uh, came to UW Madison in the mid '90s with the help of some scholarships, and um, I, uh, I studied uh, Spanish and global cultures. Um, did a lot of uh, kind of part-time jobs to help get myself through college, uh, but then really started working in the field of education. So I was a youth program coordinator for Centro Hispano here in town. Uh, I worked uh, at the Safe Haven program on uh, Allied Drive. Uh, and then I was a middle school teacher in an urban school in Baltimore uh, and also worked in a bilingual kindergarten classroom out in uh, eastern Washington state in a, a migrant community out there. Um, when I had my first, uh, first child, I switched gears a little bit and started work as a medical interpreter. Uh, so I did that for several years and then when my family uh, moved back to Madison, I got a staff interpreter job at uh, Dean Clinic here in town. So I did that for about six months and uh, transitioned into a, a manager of that department role. Uh, did that for several years, had some good successes there and was asked to step into uh, uh, another role as director of health information at Dean Clinic. So that's where I was for the last uh, seven or eight years uh, doing that work. So I had a really good opportunity, kind of fell into it a little bit, but had a good opportunity to um, lead a, a large department with a lot of people and a, and a large budget and uh, with a lot of focus around process improvement, project management, and just really learned about um, how you can really affect change when you work with, uh, with everybody. Um, kind of at the same time, I have done a lot of work in the community. So uh, early on, again, sort of more focused in education. I was a, <coughs> excuse me, a board member and treasurer for Nuestro Mundo um, Community School here. And uh, I was a PTO president for my kids' schools. Uh, and then in the last three years, I sort of transitioned to uh, being on city uh, committees. So I was on the Pedestrian Bicycle Motor Vehicle Commission and Long Range Transportation Planning Committee. Lack of affordable housing and the pressure it brings to the issue of homelessness is a chronic problem that Madison cannot seem to get ahead of. What new ideas can you advance to help address the issue? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the, the housing struggle is, is out there for a lot of folks, but uh, you know, of course, of particular interest is affordable housing. And I think it's a, it's a really important dynamic. And if we don't get a handle on it, we're gonna find ourselves in a pretty bad spot. And I think we've seen other cities in the US and kind of what can happen if you, if you don't get ahead of it. Uh, I've been encouraged by uh, the investments that we've made as a city uh, in, in some of the affordable housing projects. Um, but I think there's some really interesting opportunities around uh, investing more heavily in community land trusts uh, and in cooperative housing. Uh, I think there's also some, some opportunities to really incentivize and support uh, first generation home ownership as well. Um, as well as looking at our, at our zoning. Uh, you know, a lot of cities have, have gotten in the news lately around uh, changing some of their zoning from single, uh, single family to allow for uh, duplexes and three units. And I think all, kind of all of those things together can help provide more housing across the board, uh, but specifically then uh, for low housing, low income housing as well. There has been discussion of the policies and procedures of the Madison Police Department. What is your perspective on whether any changes are needed in ways Madison police operate in our community? Yeah, uh, another really, really good question and an important issue in Madison. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've followed along with uh, the Common Council meetings and the, the Policy and Procedure Review Committee um, over the last several years, um, have you know, read the OIR report. I think the thing that really stands out for me is the sort of tension that, that I feel in the community, and it seems like things have become really polarized and there's sort of a, a group that says, you know, we need to support our police and are really, um, I think, get frustrated with any conversation around what could we do better. And then on the other hand, there's people that feel like, um, you know, especially some of our marginalized communities are really feeling a, a negative impact around some of our current practices. So, you know, at the heart of both of those arguments, I hear people talking about wanting to feel safe. So uh, for some people that feels like, 
more police presence or better supporting our police department to, to make sure that their communities feel safe. And then on the other side, people feeling like some of that same police presence is, uh, is not having them feel safe. So, you know, I think one of the things I'd like to really focus on is trying to bridge that gap because I, I really think people are on the same page um, and we just need to get past some of the talking points and really start to focus on how can we make sure that the whole community has that feeling of safety. Many residents perceive Madison to be a divided city, one in which people of color are less likely to thrive than our whites. Do you share this perception? And if so, what might you propose to address the division? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I guess. I don't, I, it's hard to look at all of the data and, and to, to feel like uh, that's not the case. Uh, you know, again, some of my, my previous work here in town with, uh, with Centro Hispano, um, or also at, at uh, Dean Clinic. So as a medical interpreter, I worked with uh, you know, a lot of our immigrant and refugee populations, uh, making sure that they had access to health care um, and that language barrier wasn't one of the things that got in the way. You know, I, I think it, it has gotten a lot of attention, but it's really difficult to talk about in an abstract way. So really from my perspective, the way that we start to address that is by looking at the, the key um, kind of components of city services. So really digging into what we talked about before in terms of housing, uh, really looking at transportation and at jobs. You know, I think if, we, if people have, uh, have a home, if they have the ability to get where they need to go uh, and have a way to, to make a living, uh, I think that's really the best way for us to, uh, to reduce some of the inequities that we have in place right now. What do you believe is the specific issue of most concern to the residents of your district and how do you want to work on solving it? Yeah, uh, I think honestly uh, there's been a, there's a lot of concern around development. So, you know, we're District 15 is a little bit further out than some of the other districts that have been uh, experiencing this already over the last decade or so. Uh, but it, there's been a lot of activity recently. So, um, you know, the, the Royster Clark property, the uh, Cottage Grove Activity Center plan, there's a couple developments there, either in the works or, or planned. Uh, recently, the Milwaukee Street Special Area Plan, uh, you know, calls for a, a likely significant development there. And so a lot of, a lot of folks in the neighborhoods in District 15 um, I think get why infill development is, is important, but are a little bit concerned about what that might do and how that might change the neighborhood. So um, I think the alder in District 15 is going to have a really important job of balancing that need to support that, uh, that infill development. I think there's all kinds of reasons why, why we need to do that. Uh, but at the same time, make sure that we're focused on strengthening the communities where that development happens and not just growing them. Which council committees do you believe you should serve on and why? Uh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I, was, uh, I was on the, the Pedestrian Bicycle Motor Vehicle Commission and Long Range Transportation Planning Committee. Um, I was also involved with the uh, sort of ad hoc uh, Transportation Ordinance Review Committee that took a look at the structure of our transportation committees and recommended changes that were implemented this summer. And um, so now we have a transportation commission and a transportation planning and policy board. Um, so broadly, transportation is an issue that I, I have a lot of experience in and knowledge, and I, and I think it's one of the most pressing issues for Madison to really get us to, uh, to that uh, more sustainable transportation future. So really developing transit, for example, is just without question is, is one of the, the, the key issues. So I'd love to continue to work uh, on, on those groups. And uh, I think the link between transportation and land use is also uh, really, really important. So I think plan commission is another uh, important uh, committee that, uh, that I could bring value to. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Well, uh, thanks for the opportunity, first of all, uh, and League, League of Women Voters and City Channel. Uh, you know, I, I, I really love um, the work, especially that City Channel does in terms of opening things up for, um, for our community to be able to participate. Uh, and, and that's really probably the foundation of my campaign is really focusing on uh, kind of open government, uh, good communication with residents and really fostering um, more resident engagement. So uh, I think there's some really good work happening right now with the, um, with the task force on the structure of city government and I think there's a lot of um, potential recommendations coming out of there that will 
help people get more engaged in local government. And I think that can also then lead to more engagement in uh, county and in state government and in national gov uh, government and politics as well. So I really want to focus there. Uh, in addition, I'm really uh, concerned and interested in working on sustainability broadly, both environmental health and uh, sustainability of our transportation network, as I mentioned before. Um, and then the last piece that I really want to focus on is around livable neighborhoods. So this, this is really relevant to the question of development, uh, how that integrates with existing communities, uh, how we can make sure that residents uh, benefit from some of this development and, and get better access to amenities in the neighborhood. So you know, that's, that's really where I'm going to focus in terms of my campaign and, uh, and hopefully once elected. Um, and uh, just would really love the support of everybody uh, on the, the primary on February 19th. And if anybody uh, would like more information or wants to learn more about uh, my campaign, they can check me out at uh, grantformadison.com. I would like to thank Grant Foster for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of the Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I want to thank you for joining us. Yeah.